Welcome to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast. Your home for all things Bolton Wanderers up the trotters, the Northwest's number one podcast. Good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome back to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast. We are back with you once again with another episode of the preview brought to you by us here at the Fan Zone. So of course, I think everyone knows what game is up next for the Wanderers. It's a trip to Pride Park as we face Derby County in what is a, it's a top of the table clash and a monumental game. I think it's fair to say for uh, for both sides or almost top of the table clash. Um, it's uh, it's huge, isn't it? We're joined by Chris Holt of Rams Review. Thanks for joining us, Chris. How are you this evening? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, pleasure to be on, guys. Thank you. It's uh, it's our pleasure having you on, and uh, a very warm welcome to you all in the chat. Uh, I can see a few names in here: Brandon, Ian, David, Suchi, Alex, Kelly. Uh, a very warm welcome to you all. Thanks for choosing to spend your Thursday evening with us. Hopefully, we can pay you with a uh, uh, an exciting episode of the preview. So, without further ado, we will get stuck in. And kick off this happening this evening's episode. I'll get it right at some point tonight. <laughs> we'll kick off this evening's episode of the preview. So, Wanderers need uh, need points on the board. Derby County need points on the board. Both teams are looking to. Uh, <sighs> looking for automatic promotion there are are no two ways about it and uh, I mean whatever team comes out on top on Saturday will be in with a uh, very good chance it would seem not very many games to go in the season at all we'll hand over to uh, Chris from Rams Review first uh, and get your point on it but what are you expecting from the game well first of all gentlemen I think you're going to get 32,000 there which will be um, something that a lot of the players haven't played in front of. I think that might have a burden on a lot of the way that the players will play on both sides. Um, I think you'll see a different Derby County to what you saw at your place early in the season. I think one thing that we've seen over the last three or four games is the shackles have come off. Um, We've brought Dwight Gale into the, uh, into the, the club. Uh, We've had to sort of change our style because of James Collins injury. Yeah. And um, I think it's actually benefited the, the club almost and the team because we've become almost a, a free-flowing, courageous, if you're going to score three, we'll score four kind of team. So um, I don't know if Bolton are expecting that to come at them, but um, I, I would expect an end-to-end game, to be honest, because I, I imagine of looking at some of the results that uh, your guys have had, you'll also come with the, the confidence of uh, scoring a few goals. Absolutely, straight uh, fresh off the back of a, a five nil win at home against Oxford United in what was a very very impressive performance. Uh, it must be said, Chris, you're going on Saturday. Um, what are you expecting from the game from a, a Wanderers perspective? How are you feeling? Um, a lot better after Tuesday night. That's for certain. Obviously, uh, yeah. you know two. Two all draws preceding that. Um, one which was very creditable away at Barnsley, and then one not so creditable away at Exeter. Um, yeah, I think as we discussed on oh, last night's pod, that Tuesday came as a bit of a surprise to get such a glut of goals. Um, so I would hope that that can give us some impetus and give us some confidence despite the uh, the injury crisis that's ravaged the club to go and play just play just go in go, go into the game try not and be try not to be too nervous I think Colin mentioned obviously the 80,000 at Wembley will will, will will help and getting 20 odd thousand a week at home this season hopefully will will but it will be it'll be a, a cauldron in there the, the, obviously the the expectation and the importance of the game um so what do i expect i expect a performance 
I expect some courage and I expect levels similar, if not the same or better than Tuesday night. Um, one thing that I will say before we go on um, about Saturday is that, um, unfortunately, um, a Derby County supporter, Angie Valance, uh, sadly passed away. Um, there will be a minute's applause on the 69th minute on Saturday. So I encourage all supporters travelling to the ground. Obviously, Derby fans will know more about this than us Bolton fans, but if we can get that out there, get it across social media and make sure that that's respected on 69 minutes, um, travelled home and away, um for over 25 years. So if we could honour that, please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that would be marvellous. Um, but, yeah, I'm expecting a good game. So let's have it. Certainly should be a good game. And, and like you said there, I urge you all to uh, to pay your respects uh, come Saturday. We will now touch over and we will head in and have a look at both team seasons so far. <laughs> So, Wanderers in third place on 74 points with Derby County, one place above us in second, and also one point above us on 75 points. It's been an interesting season, I think, for both teams. Uh, Wanderers, I don't think, have been, it's not certainly not been plain sailing, um, and we're all familiar with how we got here. But let's have a look at, at Derby County for a minute, and Chris, we'll hand over to you. What do you make of your, your season so far? How have you found it in terms of expectations and how they've married up? Up. You know, if you look back to the start of the season, you know, you didn't really have, it wasn't a, a, a it's, you've had a rough, rough patches here and there, but it's not been, you know, dire straits uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So what have you made of your season so far? I think the low point was when we were 13th, when we got beat by Stevenage. And I think there was a lot of questions asked about, the, the, the management and the tenure and obviously the club came out then and gave their full support to Paul Warren and I think that helped I think I think the slow start came from um, the recruitment wanting to change the philosophy of the club into a 3-5-2 and um, a lot of the guys that came in were either injured or got injured quite early mm. um, and that changed Paul Warren's plans quite considerably to, to go to a, black, a back flat four um, I think then you had Aaron Cashin was obviously in the window with Brighton uh, knocking at the door twice. Yeah. That disrupted probably the best young defender in this league. And I don't say that through Bison. I think that's, I think everybody knows how good Aaron Cashin is. But I think we had our normal play you know, when the manager gets manager of the month award in January. Ultimately, you know what's going to come. And the lull came straight after that. I think we, uh, I think we got back to back defeats, and people start to panic. We haven't, we've never been great, if that makes sense. We've never wow. blown teams away. We've had a couple of freakish results, like we beat Peterborough four-one away, but I wouldn't read too much into the score. We had the seventeen minutes. Martin Waghorn had the best seventeen minutes of his career, uh, and we were four-one up uh, at half time. The, the, the reality is, is that that game was far closer than, than the score makes out. I would say that you are playing us at the wrong time because I think Derby are now playing with confidence. I think, like I said at the start of the pod, there is a, a courage there. There's almost like Paul once told them to, to do what you feel you want to do, play some football. Um, and you know all about Nathaniel Mendes Lang. He he's yeah. at the moment he's at the moment ripping the league up, sixteen assists. But there's a there's a lad close to your area by the name of Tom Barkhausen, who's from oh, the yeah. uh, end of the woods, um, who is currently probably our best player of the last couple of games. Um, so expect expect a very different Derby County to what you saw at your place. I think when we went to your place, there was a fear of getting beaten. And now there's there's no fear. I think that fear is gone. Um, me personally, I'm, I still debate whether I'm a Paul Warren fan or not. 
I think his football sometimes is is quite dire. And there's always been, you've probably seen on social media that a lot of the Derby fans have never been a fan of his football. But yeah. I think it's got, to, yeah, it's got to that business end of the season now where I think we'll look at that again in the summer. Let's just get over the line or hopefully get over the line and see where we are then. Is he um is he somewhat mirroring what he did with with, with Rotherham in, in, in many respects? Because obviously Derby and Rotherham, two very, very different clubs, but in terms of, 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 of how he's setting up, because notoriously when, when Wall was at, at at the Millers, it was it was hard work. It was really hard work to break them down. Has he kind of brought that into the way that Derby play at all? He tried. Um, right. <laughs> it, it wasn't popular. It right. wasn't working. It's had its results. And what you're basically saying is that Rotherham played with width and they went for the big man up top with, with yeah. Crooks and, and what have you. Um, he still plays width. He still tries to go with wing backs. Um, it's looking a lot better now than it did. It got to the point where it was so ropey, he had to change the formation. Right. I always say, to, I always say to people, if you want to look at a Paul Warren's tenure so far in the Derby County reign, he signed, I think it's thirteen players now over the transfer windows under the restrictions we've had. Yeah, how many of the players that you'll see against you on Saturday were actually his signings, and how many were Liam Rossini's signings? Yeah, because there was two different styles of football. Liam Rossini played a very tippy tappy from the back through the zones, through the channels. Yeah. I personally love that football and, he, and he's, he's bearing fruit at Hull. Paul Warren came in with a completely different style, different philosophy. It's taken its time. It took its toll at first where I think Derby dropped off at the end of last season because mm -hmm. Paul Warren expects a lot of chasing, a lot of pressing, whereas Liam Zini was very much uh, stay in formation, stay in your set lines and let the ball come to you. Derby are a lot fitter now than we were last year. Um, yeah. Whether they continue to stay in shape until the end of the season is to be seen. You were saying at the start of the, at the, start of the pod that you've got in, an injury crisis. We haven't as such. We've got a couple out, but the couple that are out aren't first team, as you were saying, aren't massive losses. Mm. So, um, so, so answering the question in brief, yes and no. He does try to play the long ball stuff, but you'll find now that Derby are playing through the channels, and I think you'd be quite surprised what you'll see on Saturday. Yeah, the end of February was a little bit of a rough patch with two consecutive defeats, one to Barnsley and one to Charlton. But March has uh, certainly looked up and, and and been much much better for you with obviously three straight wins, scoring eight goals and only conceding one. What's been that, that change in fact? Obviously, you mentioned confidence was a big thing and, and perhaps self-belief. What, what do you think has been the, the turning point? That's a really good question. Me personally, I think the big turning point has been Dwight Gale. Um, we have a very good defence. Uh, Joe Wildsmith's gone back in goal. He, he's consistent. Wow. He's, he's a good keeper. Um, we've got probably the player of the season so far, Curtis Nelson, playing out of his skin, the former Blackpool defender. Eric Cashin looks solid. And then you've got Sonny Bradley there, who everyone knows Sonny Bradley's uh, history with winning back-to-back -back promotions with Luton Town. Um, Dwight Gale has come into the team from out of nowhere and everyone was expecting not a lot from him because he's had two years in the cold at Stoke. And let's be honest, anyone who goes to Stoke for two years will be, will be feeling cold and miserable anyway. <laughs> so... Um, I think we've sort of rescued him from the mire. One thing Derby have done is they, they, they've allowed they've allowed players to express themselves and stay on the ball far longer. We were very reliant and heavily reliant on Nathaniel Mendes Lang to do a lot of the the trickery and the width stuff. But Bark Hazen has come into his form at the right time. I think you'll be surprised. He plays a free role, so he sort of plays neither at a ten or a nine. He, he drifts where he needs to where he needs to go and I think that's his best position he played this at Morecambe in his early days and he, he was excellent had it yeah. and got himself the move to Preston didn't he yeah um Sibley's gone to a, a wing back position which I think suits him well but I think another guy that has really now come to the front as as we'll all know him is a guy called Joe Ward mm -hmm. who we signed from Peterborough the wing back yeah. 
who is probably technically the best cross of the ball uh, we have at Derby. And uh, if you've done your scouting, you'd have seen the ball that he whipped in for Gale yeah. for the first goal uh, against Reading and also right. the balls he whipped in against uh, Bristol Rovers. So I think you've got your uh, work cut out, guys, to be honest. Certainly be uh, a tough game. I don't think anyone is expecting no. uh, an easy run over um, on either side. I think, you know, there's, there's plenty of talent there. Our, our league position says enough about that. Um, to the 141 of you watching along at home, thank you very, very much for joining us. Let us know in the thank comments you. your thoughts as we head into the game. Let us know what you're thinking and feeling. Um, Chris, for Wanderers then, it's uh, we're all under no illusions. It's it's definitely not been plain sailing getting to where we are now. But it feels like perhaps we're on a, a little bit of a turning point. Obviously, there's been some questions raised over recent performances heading out of uh, February being particularly difficult, I think. And I think since yeah. January, things have felt perhaps a little bit off. But results have still been coming in, which is the all important thing. Wanderers now four games unbeaten since um, those two games that we will... Um, not yeah. talk about. Yeah, yeah, but, we'll skip across those Wigan and Blackpool. Yeah, best do that. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So <laughs> four games for Wanderers now without without losing. Two wins, two draws. It's uh it's looking better. What are you expecting at Derby? Um like I said earlier, I, I expect that progression to continue. I mean the second half at Barnsley. The first half at Exeter were were exceptional halves of football, um, and then we we put them together against Oxford on Tuesday. And look, lo and behold, if you play ninety minutes, look what happens. You you know you play a team who, to be fair, haven't been in the best of form. Um, they've won one in five, Oxford, but to dismantle them in the way that we did. So it's, we mentioned the other the other night that it was the heaviest defeat in seven seasons or seven years. Um, it was a it was resounding and and it was it, it was just such a character change and a confidence change. Um, I think we mentioned last night as well the fact that obviously um, you know we're so threadbare up top that Bod Varson and Collins have seized the opportunity they'll know that they'll be playing for the next couple of games um until Dion's back probably after the international break um so it gives them the opportunity to really show that what they can do and as a, a centre forward pairing it it clicked immediately on Tuesday um and the midfield was phenomenal uh, I think Last night we were looking at man of the match for Tuesday, and it was it, it was a three, it was a three. It was it was Magoma, Thomason, and Sheehan that you couldn't you couldn't really separate. Um, yeah. So we've just got to play the we've got to play. I'm going to say it: play the game, not the occasion. I know it's a cliche, but just carry on as we were Tuesday night. No change. Carry on. And I think we'll be fine. Of course, you mentioned no change and you mentioned, obviously, Dion being away for the international break. So it only feels right that we will just now head over and take a look at the injury situation for both teams. To all of you watching at home, your favourite Kermit graphic is back once again. And um, um, yeah, for Wanderers, it's, uh, I don't think it's quite as, as bad as it has been over Christmas and, and into January, but it's still not ideal. Dion has been, I think, ruled out as a absolutely no chance. Um, little little make Saturday before heading away with Northern Ireland over the international break. No real information on whether he is fit or whether he isn't. I think Northern Ireland, it seems, may be taking a chance on him becoming fit, uh, ready for their game. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Nathan Baxter, I think, will be ruled out as well. And hopefully, 
back soon. Obviously, the long-term absentees, Dan and Lundelu, uh, still not in action. George Johnston, the same. Although Johnston making progress, it would seem. There's uh, a couple of names out for, for Wanderers as well. So, Chris, what are you expecting personnel-wise? you expecting the same similar sort of team? Uh, I am. I'm expecting exactly the same team as Tuesday night. I know that we have been rotating significantly dependent on the opposition, but I think the time now, especially given that, you know, it is the last game before the international break, that yeah, just, you know, play till bits fall off you. You know what I mean? It, 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 you've got that recuperation time after Saturday. Um, we can ill afford <laughs> Any more injuries, especially up top. We've gone from seven fighting fit strikers and a, an embarrassment of riches in that area to three. <laughs> one, one of which is Cameron Jerome. Um, I just, just about to say, speaking of bits falling off you, you've got Cameron Jerome and Dwight Gale <laughs> making, the, I, I, making the game, I, and that's uh, a blast from the past. Isn't it? I know. I think... I think a lot of us Bolton fans kind of, well, I, I think a lot of us have underestimated him um, in terms of his output. Granted, he's not prolific. However, he's done a sterling job in terms of seeing games out, winning penalties, just generally using all that experience. Um, and I imagine that, you know, that's something similar with, with Dwight Gale. However, he scored three and three. I don't think. Um, He's got a couple of years on drone though, hasn't he? He's uh, a little he? bit behind. How old, yeah. how old is he, Chris? How old is Dwight Gale these days? 34? 35. I think he's, 30, he's, he's turning 35 at some point in the next uh, month or so. Got it. Got it. So, it, yeah, it's interesting. I think um, it's a bit of a parallel universe. In, in many respects, seeing those two going head to head, but consummate professionals and probably they found the level. And I'll tell you what, both of them can do a job, so why not? But yeah, no, I expect the same as Tuesday, personnel wise. Um, probably more, I was going to say more emphasis on defense, but we've got no choice in, in terms of the bench, so we'll go with what we've got. Absolutely. And what about in, in Derby County's camp there? And anyone missing that we should uh, be thankful won't make the game on Saturday? I, I said earlier that we didn't really have any first teams out, but I was wrong. I forgot about James Collins, which we'll come to in a minute. Going back to Cameron Jerome, we, we had him at Derby for, for a year, I think it was, oh. just a bit longer. And he did okay for us under Gary Rowett. We, we, we used him in the playoffs. In fact, he scored for Derby uh, to get us in there. Um, against Card, if you've got a brace against Card, with one of the most freakish goals you'll ever see. Um, and then he scored the took we took the lead against Fulham in the playoff semis, if you remember. And Cameron Jerome scored a bullet of a header, a fanta fantastic goal. Uh, so it'd be good to see him. And, 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 and like, like I said, Chris, how it's how you use them. Um, we've got James Collins out, he's our leading scorer. Yeah, um, three games ago, we were panicking. Well, four or five games ago, we were panicking. Um, but since then, Dwight Gale's come in. And uh, like I said, it, it's changed the impetus of the style of the football. Dwight Gale is fitter than people thought he would be. And I think the key to using players like Cameron Jerome and Dwight Gale and another guy that we had at Derby, Colleen Kazim Richards, a couple of years ago, uh, yeah. is you, you make sure they don't do what they don't need to do. You yeah. know, we don't, we're not expecting Dwight Gale to run out of the box and go chase balls down the line 30, 40 yards. He's not going to do it. No. But, he, but he's still got that two or three yards of, of pace in the first five that will get him that extra yard, which a good striker always needs. And mm -hmm. Jerome Jerome has that in his locker still as well. Um, going back to Derby's injury list, we've got uh, Connor Washington out. He's been out long term now. And um, he had a freakish injury away with Northern Ireland and no one quite knows where he had, he had an instant off, off completely away from football, which has caused him to be out and no one knows exactly what it was. Oh. Um, yeah. He, he's, he's never really been in the team as such. He's had two or three games here and there, but he's not, he's not really going to be missed. Uh, Callum Elder, the wing back that we, the Australian we had from Hull again, 
injury prone season. I haven't really seen the best of him. Um, Kane, Kane Wilson has just come back into the ah. squad. <laughs> I was wondering when his name would pop up. Oh, Kane Wilson. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's struggling to get in the team at the moment because Joe Ward is. Joe Ward has basically come back in and, and been a revelation. Um, Joe Ward was out in the cold. <coughs> excuse me. He was out in the cold in sort of January, and all of a sudden he's come back in and has, has made the wing-back spot his own. Um, and the other long-term injury is a guy called Jake Rooney, who is a cousin of Wayne, yeah. or nephew, and um, phenomenal talents who, who will only – Become bigger and better for it when it comes back to Derby. So, yeah, I think I think we're pretty much full guns blazing. Uh, Craig Forsyth is back from injury. Martin Waghorn is back from injury. So, I think the thing that we have now against uh, you mentioned the defeat at Reading and the defeat at uh, Charlton. We, we we were poor. We were really poor, and we didn't really have a plan B available on the bench. We now have a bench that 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 can uh, come out at 60, 65 minutes. And one thing that you will see with Paul Warren teams, and we we did this on Tuesday, he's not frightened to do quadruple substitutions. So between 60 and 70 minutes, don't be a surprise if you see five on and five off. Really? Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Certainly uh, takes fresh legs to uh, to a new level. Um, right. To the 194 of you, 196 of you that are now watching along live at home, thank you very, very much for joining us on a, a Thursday thank evening. Um, we are your home for Bolton Wanderers content, both before games, after games, in between games. You, Whatever you need, we've got it. So thank you very much for joining us. It is uh, ginormously appreciated. Um, something else that's appreciated is the staggering £545 that has been donated over on our Just Giving page. For those of you who don't know, in a week tomorrow, oh, sorry, yeah, a week tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, a week tomorrow we will be doing the uh, Bolton Wanderers in the Community Tough Sleep Challenge. Uh, so we're doing a sleep out and we have raised £545. Uh, so to everyone that has donated, a huge, huge, huge thank you. Your support Brilliant. has been incredible. Today has been astonishing. Um, yeah. It's been really, really cool to see. And if you haven't seen, uh, Jordan Hookaway on Twitter has uh, very, very kindly um, agreed to give away a signed Josh Dean shirt. So if you want to get your hands on that, I saw some refer it to as uh, a magician's cloak, which is yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, if, yeah, uh, yeah. If, if you want to get your hands on that, then all you've got to do is head over to his Twitter. You can find it on ours as well. We've retweeted it. So if you go over there and find it, you just enter yourself into that by uh, by leaving a like. But he's kindly put our, our link to our Just Giving. So if you do feel inclined to do so, then uh, if you pop over there. And, uh, and give whatever you can. It'd be hugely appreciated. But I think that just about rounds off this evening's episode of the preview. I, uh, I'm breathing. Yeah, I breathe. 205 <laughs> of you now watching. Uh, thank you very much. On The support over the last couple of weeks has been mind-blowing. Really, oh, really has. Um, <laughs> we don't know why you're all here, <laughs> but we hope you stick around. <laughs> Because Chris is here, that's so, what it is. That's what it will be. It's not us. <laughs> no, it must not be. It oh, hang not. on a minute. Hang, hang on. We've, we've just had a reminder from Colin. Predictions. Let's. Oh, let's of do course. A, a quick round robin. Go on, Chris. What What are your thoughts? Mm. Fire well, in the I, chat as well. Well, I, I did forget another injury out for the season. That's Ryan Yambi. Uh, who you'll know from your neck of the woods from from his days at Wigan. I think he was yeah. at Blackburn as well. So um, he's out for the season, just announced today. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, if you would have asked me four games ago, I would have put you down as heavy favourites. Um, but I've seen a different Derby County this last three games. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I just have a feeling it's going to be a, a bournemouth luton esque <laughs> game I really do. I really do. I think it's going to be a ding donger. Uh, Ian Everett doesn't like to sit back. Paul Warren doesn't like to sit back. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a derby three two. Blimey, I'm. I'm going to go. 
I, I, I ain't going to go for a 3 2. I'd, I'd, I'd like that, but obviously, two alls suffice to say. But um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with a one all draw. No, I'll pull the splinters out of my bum when I finish. But I'm going for a one all draw. I'm in two minds. Um, I'm going to go for a Wanderers 3 1 win. Um, I had half a mind to say 3 2. But I don't know. I've just got, I've just got <laughs> yeah. a feeling. Yeah, you can't do that. I've, I've just got a feeling. Three wow. two, and uh, hopefully, come Sunday, we'll bring you a three point podcast. And what a three Fingers points crossed. it would be! But Fingers until crossed. then, safe travels to all you wanderers making the trip down to Pride Park, and uh, hopefully, bring back three points. But until the next episode, take care, and we will catch you in the next one. And of course, a very big thank you to Chris from Rams Review for thank joining you, us. Much if you want to find Rams Review, then if you head into the description of the episode, you can find them down there. But take care, and we will see you in the next one.